did you ever have that movie that you just want to succeed? Like, a film that has a bunch of elements that you just wish were more prevalent in the industry and its quality and success could completely change those elements' relevance. Well, one of those for me was Wendell and Wilde, a Netflix stop-motion animated movie directed by Henry Selick. Stop-motion animation is perhaps one of the more underutilized animation methods there is out there. While 2D is often the one being brought up for not seeing much attention on the big screen either, at least it lives on in television form and is beginning to sort of have a resurgence in feeders with anime movies and films combining 2D and 3D being really successful lately. Comparatively speaking, stop motion is just a mere gimmick more often than not, only being used for specific references or cameos, but never as the center of attention that can fully capitalize on its unique attributes. Stop motion has such unique movements and handcrafted aesthetics that create something distinct and immersive that is almost exclusive to the medium. So when I heard that we were gonna get an entirely new gothic stop motion animated film by the same guy who directed Coraline and The Nightmare Before Christmas, I was pretty excited. Not only would we get a brand new movie with that style, but maybe this could also spark some more public interest in stop motion, so we could get entirely new original projects in that medium. Henry's track record is admittedly pretty hit or miss, but when he nails it, then he really creates something special. But is this another one of those successes, or does it fall flat? Well, it... Ain't no monkey bone, at least. But it sure isn't on the same level as Coraline, and it mostly comes down to the story and pacing. I'm gonna go right into some spoilers here in terms of plot elements, so if you haven't watched the movie yet and wanna go in completely blind, then skip to this point here. So, after suffering her entire life with guilt and anxiety over the loss of her parents, our protagonist Kat gets in contact with the titular demons Wendell and Wilde. They promise to help her revive her parents from the dead as a thanks for bringing them free. However, the two demons have some other plans in mind after returning to the living world that involves something a little more than what Kat initially thought. That synopsis has tons of potential, but unfortunately the execution is rather slow-paced yet undeveloped and unfocused. Cat dealing with her trauma while interacting with her personal demons should have been the core of the film since it is on paper very intriguing, but that conflict is rarely given the attention that it should have been given. We don't spend much time seeing Kat deal with her inner conflicts, rather it just amounts to her striving to resurrect her parents by blindly following the demon's requests, which only by the end of the second act do we actually get some personal confrontation from Kat, but even then there was not much build up to it directly when she doesn't conflict her feelings throughout the duration of the movie. Instead, there are a whole lot of exposition and different plot elements set up throughout the movie, but few of them get much attention nor satisfying conclusions. The characters that the film is named after is sadly a prime example of this. Wendell and Wilde have the same motivations, that they both want to open a theme park for whatever reason, and to fulfill that dream, they mostly interact with the priest and evil corporation to get that dream come true, but this comes at the cost of them feeling so disconnected and unrelated to the actual personal conflicts of the film. In what way do their theme park endeavors have anything to do with Kat's past? The demons and Kat don't meet each other until half an hour into the film, and not in person until the one hour mark. And even then, their first interaction in person only amounts to a falafel pickup. Aren't Wendell and Wilde supposed to be Kat's personal demons, so why aren't they more present? Maybe they could continuously taunt Kat and make her question her choices even more, or have a dilemma of sorts, like anything that actually involves her grief and character progression. In place of that, we have a subplot that takes too much time away from the personal conflict, for example involving a generic and by the numbers evil corporation versus small town subplot. There is nothing inherently wrong with having common tropes in your plot as long as it is well executed and preferably has its own little spin on things. 
problem here is that it is incorporated in such a poor way. The corporation scenes are dragged out and unengaging, and the save the town plot aspect was never really something that was set up for the film in the first place. <laughs> the climax says otherwise though, where we have this quite frankly goofy action scene against Clax Corp's bulldozers, but it is so silly and out of place that I really do question the movie's priorities here. The tone here is for the most part fitting, but when we have scenes like that final fight, it sometimes feels held back and kitty, despite the fact that this is a PG-13 movie. Belser's plotline is also in a similar boat, where the resolution for it feels so juvenile and out of place, when his presence was built up as a threatening menace, only for him to turn a leaf in mere seconds, with him suddenly caring about family? All of these unfocused plot elements lead to an exposition-heavy slow pace that it doesn't do the movie any favor. Even with all of these flaws, are there redeeming qualities that make it worth checking out either way? Well, yes, most definitely, but it really depends on how much you admire the art form here. Because visually speaking, this is a marvelous looking and moving picture that completely knocks it out of the park. The paper cut design style for the characters is really inspired and distinct, all of the movements are believable and smooth, yet have that imperfect handcrafted look that gives it so much personality. The gothic and dark environments enhances the atmosphere immensely and the 2D animation is incorporated so well and is also such a treat to the eye. While the cat is a pretty one-sided protagonist to be honest, Wendell and Wilde are entertaining schemers that, while not being so closely integrated into the plot, are likeable little scamps nonetheless with some funny moments. Some voice performances greatly vary in quality, I personally feel, but Toad and Jordan Peele's voice performances for the two little devils make them even more charming. There are also enjoyable concepts and scenes in the film, like when Cat confronts her inner problems. That sequence was entirely cared about the visuals and was extremely well executed, but damn, I just wish that this whole movie would have such a consistent quality throughout the entire romp. At last, these moments are just a couple of highlights in what is otherwise a pretty average movie that is cluttered and unfocused with an inconsistent tone, characters, pacing and anticlimactic plotlines. While being cared about a stellar animation, aesthetic and some charming characters, I would mostly recommend this film to those who really love and admire stop motion mediums or have a soft spot for the gothic imagery and grim atmosphere. If you fit into that category, then this fits right up your alley, and even if you think that this looks visually stimulating just a little bit, I would say give it a shot. However, don't go in and expect the most out of its story and characters, and treat it more as a, well, tree to the eyes. I really hope that we'll get to see more stop motion action in the future and that Selig's other projects will see the light of day. Even if my view on this film isn't all that positive, it is in the end something I greatly desire to see more of that can next time around hopefully live up to the potential a stop motion movie has in both the animation and the story. So with all of that said, I will have to give Wendell and Wilde a 5 out of 10. This has been Raccoon Animations, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned.